Welcome back, friends. Thanks so much for dropping by again. This is part two of working with selections in Digital Performer. If you missed part one, it's down there in the description. You might want to check it out first. But I've got some really good tips for you you might not know. I'm excited. Let's get started. Okay, so now I'm going to flip over to the mixer and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So first off, you'll notice that there is a little button here and that button is the mini menu. You'll find this in a lot of DP windows and in this window you can see these things relate to what sections of the mixer I'm showing. For instance, right now I'm not showing the fader. Let's show the fader. And then I'm showing the solos and mutes and I'm showing the sends and I'm showing the inserts. First off, two key commands which are really helpful and they work just like the track selector key commands. Option uh, will select only one area. Command will select everything but the thing that you click on. I selected the fader readout and so it selected everything but the fader readout. So what that does is that gives you the opportunity to have all sections in the mixer just by two clicks. And another thing is that down here are some board layouts. These are ones that are user specified. And then there's a couple from DP, from Motu. One is show everything, which is kind of a good one. Show everything shows all of the tracks and it shows every section. Now some of these sections I don't like so much. So I, for instance, almost never use EQ graph I almost never use EQ controls. I almost never use dynamics graph or dynamics controls. And that starts getting things to a manageable place for me because now I can see the faders pretty well and I also see inserts and sends, etc. Now, next thing is if you want to save this board layout, you can do it. I will call it read. Now, when you go to load board layout, you can see read is there and it's checked. So let's say I'm just looking at faders now. So that's just the fader and the meter. Now, if I go to load board layout, read goes back and selects the layout that I had. Now, the tricky part about this is that these are not global. They're just specific to the project. I'd like to see some global ones. These are global, the Motu ones are global, but the user ones are not. I'd like to see some global ones where basically the concern is to be able to get to these and not necessarily to which tracks are showing. Now there is a workaround for this and that's to use window sets. So if I go up here to window and window sets, I can save this window set and I will call it read since that's what the mixer is called. I can also assign it to a key command by editing window sets and I'll go here. I happen to know the L key is not taken, so I'll use that. And then looking at something like that, so I'll press the L key and there comes my mixer just like I left it. So that is probably the best workaround is in the window sets. And one of the limitations of a window set is that it may not be shareable amongst different people. But Here's something that you could try. One thing, if I hold down the Option key and go to the Go menu, press the Option key, and you can see the library right here appears and disappears. Library is hidden, but you can do that to make it appear. And we're going to go to Preferences, and then com.mo2.digitalperformer. And here are the preferences for various things. For the window sets, for various preferences of how you left things. These are the command bindings. You could have different ones and drop them in here. Click patterns, all this stuff. Now, come here, take this, grab it, pull it into your favorites till you see that line. This is just a finder window. And now you have this right here and you can back it up. So that's a good thing because sometimes you'll have a corrupt preferences file or something like that and you can keep these as backups. I do them incrementally and anytime you're going to fool around with these you need to back them up somewhere. So for example I might hold the option key down and throw these on the desktop and now I've saved them on the desktop. The other thing to remember is that if you take any of these out 
when DP launches, it will rewrite what's not there. So that can get confusing too. You have to be very careful when you're fooling around with these and that's why the Go menu doesn't show library because, you know, we're all experts, but a lot of people would, would screw something up in there. So now this brings me to snapshots. Snapshots are amazing things. You, you work on a little bit and then you get to a point to where you really like what you're doing. And so you just want to take a snapshot. You want this to be panned that way. You want this to be panned that way. You want the cowbell here. You want this here, right? And so a lot of times I'll take a snapshot just of the volume state. So what I used to do is I would come in here with my option key selected. I would take the fader meter. Uh, then I would come down here, grab the snapshot thing. And you get all these choices from counter to next change, flat, okay, fine, track shown in mixing board. It's kind of a nightmare when you want to take a simple volume snapshot. So here's what I learned, and it's about temporary groups. If you are looking at a window and you want to affect all the tracks that are showing visible in that window, then you can double tap the W key and then everything you do, you can see now it's a whole group. And I can let that go by single tapping it and then it's not a whole group anymore. So double tap and I'm in this mode, single tap and again I'm just addressing single things. So that's for anything that you see in the window. Now the other thing is to double tap T. You can see that we're looking at all the tracks here in the track selector, but if I double tap T with tracks selected, then it will just work on those tracks. Let's set the color to red. So let's set them both to red. Now I'll set them both to green. Um, because it works on the two tracks, but not the rest of them, if that makes sense. Like that, right? Single tap to let it go. Now I'm gonna show you a couple things here. For one thing, you hold option down, and then you drag any track, and they'll all resize to the same size. If you're not holding option down, then one will resize and the rest won't. Next, if you hold down option and you go in here, you can, change all of the tracks to whatever layer you want to look at, the same layer. So if I want to look at the pan in all these, fine. If I want to look at volume, that's fine. But let's say I want, you know, I have some volume set up in my mixing board. I'll go back to the sequence window. I'm on volume and I can just come here and from counter to chunk end, track showed, and then current data types in edit window, right? So that means the data type is volume. So if you just okay that, then it's just gonna, it's gonna get all your volume. This is hard to see because it's all the way up, but there's a volume there as well. Now, if I double tap W, then I can adjust all the volumes at the same time. Single tap, I'm just adjusting this one, or just adjusting this one. Double tap, adjusting all these, right? Now you notice they work keeping the same proportions. It's a little bit harder to see because this is not moving because it's already all the way down so you can't pull it down anymore. So that is so much faster than doing that thing with a mixer. It's really great. So temporary groups are, are definitely your friend. Another preference that I want to talk about that I really like having is in view and it's this. When, when you open up Digital Performer for the first time, show only the active edit type is checked. I don't like that at all. Like right now I have volume in here and I'm looking at pan, so I don't see the volume at all. And again, I'm holding option to change these, so I change them all. Now I see the volume. When I go see the pan, I don't see the volume. I don't like that. When I want to, I want to see everything, but I, these now, as you can see, are grayed out. If I click that, they'll come back. So you can jump around from data type to data type. So I want to talk a little bit about selections in the sequence editor. So you can select, if you do that, 
it deselects whatever else you had. If you hold shift, you can select non-contiguous regions. Now that's different than other areas of the program where you have to hold command to select non-contiguous things. Now the reason for that is because when you hold command down, you are changing the snap to grid state. If I have it enabled, and I hold command down, then you're going to see it disables it. If it's disabled and I hold command down, then it comes back. So they want to reserve command for that, and then shift does this other behavior. Okay, so with the I-beam tool. Now I can double tap the I key, and that brings up the I-beam. You see that right there. Double tap the A key goes back to arrow. Now the I-beam tool is designed to select every layer. Not every take, but every layer. So when I do that, I have also selected volume. So this is a good way to just pick up everything and move it. The other thing is command select is for toggling, again, the snap to grid setting. So right now it's set up to snap to grid, as you can see. If I want it not to snap to grid, I can do this and it will just free float. Now if you hold down shift, you can click somewhere else in the timeline to extend the selection. Shift, click. That extends the selection. Okay, so this is it. If you'd like, go to my Audition in Audible Mode video and you can see about how when you press Option Spacebar, you will get glorious sound of whatever tracks you have selected. Have a great day!